Oh, all right, there we go. That's better, right? There we go. Hi, everybody. Now it's gone. There we go. Ready? You good? Hi, everybody. My name is Peter. Thank you for coming out to the uh, Roast of Spider-Man. Uh, you might have noticed him saving people around the city. Um, he's, uh, he's a pretty cool guy in my book. Anyway, um, if you could do us a favor and keep your table talks down to a minimum and turn your cell phones off or on to vibrate, we would really appreciate it. Uh, and with that, I'm going to get the show started with bringing up the Roastmaster. He is uh, the... Uh, Creator of the Daily Bugle and the Mayor of New York City, please give it up for my boss, Mr. J. Jonah Jameson. Get to work. Get to work, Parker. I expect some good pictures out of this. I am J. Jonah Jameson. Tonight I am going to be surrounded by a bunch of super freaks in order to honor another super freak. Let me first tell you about the drink specials. I'm the mayor of New York City, and I'm telling you about the drink specials. After 10 o'clock, $1 PBR draft. Five, $5 double wells. Okay, we've got the plug out of the way. Now we can bring up this collection of people. First, I'd like to introduce the creator of Spider-Man. Please, welcome Stan Lee. So 
don't call him a hero. I call him a web-headed menace. I despise Spider-Man. I hate you with the intensity of a thousand suns, all going supernova at the same time. <laughs> I'm the mayor of New York City. So why am I doing this? Did you people see the new Spider-Man movies? Amazing Spider-Man 1, number 2. Did you notice something missing from the new Spider-Man movies? Something just not quite right? How about J. Jonah Jameson? I swear, you call a guy a web-headed freak on a few thousand occasions, and he cuts you out of his movie. So I'm here tonight to get into his good graces. I got a tie. <laughs> Let's take a look at a few of the other people that are here tonight. Batman is here. Batman, I hate Spider-Man. Batman, I hate Spider-Man. So how do you think I feel about your ghoulish gimmick? You sick, somber, cave-dwelling, pointy-eared emo! You make Spider-Man look like the blue bird of happiness sitting on Uncle Remus's shoulder. If I were the mayor of Gotham City... If I were the mayor of Gotham City, I would have child services beating down on your cave door so quick it would make your cow spin. Looking into your little fetish for dressing kids up in tights. Batman has had so many young boys down in the Batcave, they should start calling him Father Batman. <laughs> and who's this piece of work sitting down next to me here? This is, uh, Deathstroke. Oh, I mean Deadpool. <laughs> Deadpool is what would happen if Wolverine and Spawn had a baby. <laughs> Spawns, good looks. <laughs> How many superpowers do you have, Deadpool? I mean, let me let me look at them here. We got uh, teleportation, a healing factor, metal bone, super strength, enhanced agility. They ought to change your name to Overkill. <laughs> Seriously, Superman came up to me and said that guy has a lot of powers. <laughs> and you are original, Deadpool. You are original. Let me ask you this, do you ever get tired of having to tell the Teen Titans I'm not the masked guy with the sword that you're looking for? <laughs> and your name, your real name, is Wade Winston Wilson. <laughs> All three letters the same initial. It's been done by the best, pal. Don't try and copy JJJ. <laughs> Drunk Dr. Octopus. Woo! <laughs> I don't hate Dr. Octopus. He has tried to kill Spider-Man a ridiculous amount of times, so he's a big hero of mine. But you never get the job done, do you, Doc Ock? I hope you are a better physicist than you are a supervillain. And Doc Ock's wife told me he's no good in bed. I think it's a shame she died before he got the metal arms attached, because I think that might spice him. Tell me, Doc, uh, do you ever stick one of those things up your ass while jerking it? We're oh. <laughs> waiting there to tell. That was funny. Ah, Stan Lee is here. Stan Lee. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Stan Lee created Spider-Man. So I should hate you more than anybody up here. However, you also created me. So undoubtedly, you are a genius. <laughs> Stan Lee was in World War II. He spent World War II writing pamphlets to soldiers telling them about the, the dangers of venereal disease. And then he went on to write comic books. So Stan Lee has been keeping guys from getting laid since the 1940s. <laughs> Try and finish this before you turn to dust, okay? <laughs> Uncle Ben. What can I say bad about Uncle Ben? 
<laughs> He's the man who taught Spider-Man everything he knows about honesty, integrity, responsibility. So obviously, I hate Uncle Ben. <laughs> you are the true source of all my blackest, darkest nightmares, sir. But I want you to know, since you uh, died, I have tried my very best to treat Peter Parker like he were my very own nephew. <laughs> Electro. Electro. You are really a top-tier Spider-Man villain, sir. I mean, it's not like they made other Spider-Man movies with uh, the Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, the Sandman, Venom, the Green Goblin again, and then the Lizard, and then they decided to make a Spider-Man movie with the Green Goblin again. <laughs> and Electro. Electro was in Which I wasn't. And Electro. Am I, when we first met in the 60s, weren't you white? <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. The Daily Bugle has always had a very aggressive, affirmative action hiring policy. I'm just saying, since you do have electric powers, and you are African American, maybe you should change your name to Black Electro. It worked great in the Super Friends for Black Lightning and Black Hogan. <laughs> and Black Manta, the underwater version. <laughs> just a suggestion. <laughs> And lastly, that brings me to the girl, Mary Jane Watson. You are a lovely girl. She doesn't have any superpowers. She doesn't wear some kind of crazy costume. However, you did run out on my son John at the wedding altar in Spider-Man 2. <laughs> have, you, have you seen John lately? Have you talked to him much? You know, what's, well, you know what? He got married. He actually got married. That's right. My son got married to She-Hulk! <laughs> it's true! And now, instead of a lovely red-headed uh, model for a daughter-in-law, I've got an eight-foot green monster lady. <laughs> my kids, my grandkids, are going to be green mutant freaks. <laughs> and I am now related to the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> so thanks again, Mary Jane. That was really nice of you to run out on that. I only wish there was a way I could blame Spider-Man for that. But near as I can tell, he had nothing to do with it. So let's go ahead and bring our first roaster up here. Again, let's hope he doesn't turn to dust as he walks up here. He is the creator of Spider-Man, the creator of me, a few other people up here. Please give a nice, but not too heavy, he might have a coronary, a nice soft round of applause for Stan Lee. I am Stan Lee. I need more money from nerds than a bully at recess. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I wrote this Spider-Man character over 50 years ago. <laughs> People always ask me, why? I think the short answer is obvious. Bras. Dames. You people. Pussy. Woo! I'm going to be 93. I'll be dead before anyone realizes I was reduced to doing this. A couple of free drinks and the ability to check out Sarah behind the bar. <laughs> this is making hanging at the Playboy Mansion a distant, distant memory. As we pay tribute to one of my least favorite superheroes, Spider-Man. The feeling of pride who showed up for this momentous occasion is so <coughs> underwhelming. I can't describe it. I never thought that Spider-Man would be a worldwide icon. I just hoped that he would sell a few books and I would be able to keep my job right now. It's turned out to be so much more. Along the way, I helped create some other characters 
you might have heard of, they're actually still working. Captain America, Daredevil, The Hulk, Doctor Strange, pre-production this fall, we are coming out with a major motion picture, X-Men, The Fantastic Four, Iron Man, and now one of them still lives in his aunt's basement. <laughs> so I don't his neighbor in his underwear. What a great use of your skills, Peter. I mean, Spidey. Never before has so many minor characters been given the opportunity to roast a guy who has spoiled their poorly thought out plans. I see we've met the usual diversity requirements. Hate white guys, woman, a black reggae dude, and Jamie Fox. <laughs> Affirmative action is never a power that Marvel was able to master. <laughs> I see that Batman is here. I guess DC Comics friends finally voted him out of the League of Justice. <laughs> you showing up here is like Hillary Clinton showing up for a tea party seminar. <laughs> Apparently your escapades with the boy Wonder leaked out on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we took him in, right? <laughs> Batman, you are the reason why concealed, concealed carry laws should not be enforced. <laughs> there have been more people inside that fast Batman costume than black man inside a Kardashian. <laughs> 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 I even had to Google you. Really? <laughs> to briefly summarize your illustrious career, you got electrocuted and the ability to channel electricity. Kind of like a um, power point. Ooh. You've lost to Spider-Man, Falcon, Daredevil, even Wolverine take a piece of you. Next episode, you die by golden shower. <laughs> Octavius, let's give it up for Tom. Ah. If you had eight dicks, you can make your own circle jerk. <laughs> Deadpool, you can finally answer all those questions you've been dying to ask. <laughs> like, who are you? And why are you here? <laughs> oh, really? Who are you? Why are you here? <laughs> if this was Star Trek, you'd be wearing a red shirt. <laughs> Drunk guy gets it. <laughs> Jameson. Oh my god, that permagrin on your face is making me sick. I can't wait to write you out of the next series. <laughs> your sharp eye for detail and ability not to notice any connection between your partner and Spider Man is the reason why print journalism is dead. <laughs> For Christ's sake, stop trying to tweet Miley Cyrus, you deranged half-bred pedophile. <laughs> Mary Jane. Oh, Mary Jane. You fire-crotched, unemployed hipster. <laughs> Seeing you in real life has made all the difference. How about you sit in my lap and we play the real game of thrones? <laughs>
Please stay away, you star fuckers. Good luck and God bless you. The great Stanley. Our next presenter is also a very old person. And if we're very nice, maybe he'll make us some minute racks later on. Please welcome Uncle Ben. It's good to see you all here uh, in support of my nephew. I'm a little confused as to what's happening. <laughs> Last thing I know is I'm here to pick him up after, uh, what was it, a study session? He's nowhere to be found! And then I'm shot in the chest. A second later, I'm here on stage now. A little off point. <laughs> in my death, though, it became a bit undifferent. And I know that my nephew is an L Slater, man. Give it up for him! He's such a great guy! I raised you right, uh, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, which I wish you would have heeded the first time. <laughs> but I understand, you've changed a bit. Uh, I know what a roast is, too. Don't think I'm not a to it. <laughs> I, he doesn't, does it smell like soup to anybody in here? Is there a lot of old soup on stage? <laughs> uh, 